Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branchad, and this is episode 12 in the series. In this episode, we'll be looking at the star character. For starters, star can be used in normal mode to search forward for the word under the cursor. We saw the counterpart to this command in the episode on the pound character, which searched backward. I can navigate over to this word and hit star, which will search forward to the next occurrence of word. I can keep hitting it to cycle through all of them. Looking close at the pattern that Vim is printing out, there are these markings on either side. These are word boundaries. We can skip word boundaries with the G star command. To see an example of that, I can move over to part and hit star. There are no other occurrences of that word on its own. If I hit G star, however, the word boundaries are omitted and I can find occurrences of that word embedded in other words. Next, the star character can be used with the open and close bracket to cycle through the beginnings and endings of C-style block comments. Open bracket star will go to the start of a block comment, and close bracket star will go to the end of a block comment. Let's see it in action. Hitting close bracket star, I jump to the end of this comment and again to this next one, and one more time. Now, hitting open bracket star, I start cycling backward through the file to the openings of these block comments. Now for its use in pattern matching. This is a common special character in patterns because it allows us to match zero or more of the preceding atom. This is handy for matching anything that looks like a word, such as with this pattern. Similarly, we can use it like this to match snake case variable names, or we can even match any sequence of characters using dot star. Now for a fun example. Check out this substitute command which uses a couple of those star-based patterns. This will replace an instance of JavaScript's function syntax with the anonymous function syntax. Let's try this out. We start a substitute command and match on the function keyword. Opening a capture group, we match on any camel case function name using the star. Close the capture group, and we're already seeing the match come together. Now we handle the parameters with an opening paren, another capture group, matching on anything, close the capture group, and close the paren which snaps the match into place. And then let's tack on the opening curly. Then for our replacement, we open with const and a backslash one for our first capture group, which is the function name, equal sign, then open paren, which will hold our second capture, the parameters, followed by close paren, then the fat arrow syntax, and finally our opening curly. Hitting enter applies the substitution. That looks pretty good. And if you remember from last episode on ampersand, we can hit ampersand and it replays the previous substitution. Lastly, let's look at how star can be used as part of path name globbing when exploring the file system using netrw. Netrw is a built-in plugin for file browsing. If we start an explore command, we can use star star to match multiple levels of any directories. If you remember from a previous episode, we have a deeply nested directory lying around that we can get at. I remember the deepest directory was called directory, so if I hit tab, it will complete the rest. You can see the help files for netrw to learn more about it. It's a huge subject area, but definitely worth exploring. That's it for this episode. If you want to see anything else on star, go ahead and tab it out with the help command. Although notice that tab completing it it gets replaced with the word star, so you have to visually sift through and differentiate between star and start. In the next episode, we will be looking at the open and close parentheses characters.